Hello King Gamers and welcome to another review. This time we have the Red Magic 7 gaming smartphone from Nubia. So let's jump straight in. Another year, another Red Magic phone, and while the overall design philosophy remains pretty much unchanged compared to previous iterations, the new Red Magic 7 is still one pretty phone. This time around it comes in three flavors and we were fortunate enough to get this supernova variant with the transparent back, which simply looks amazing. Sure, it'll mostly appeal to tech lovers, geeks and gamers, but hey, that's exactly for whom this phone is made. The black and gold aesthetic here looks premium as hell, which is further boosted by some high-tech lines and the RGB lights on the cooling fan when the phone kicks into high gear. The middle portion of the phone is a bit thicker than on the Red Magic 6S Pro, making the phone look a bit more robust. On that note, this is definitely a large, somewhat chunky phone that is difficult to handle with one hand. Despite that, at least it's fairly easy to grip and hold and the added weight helps with making it feel more sturdy and premium. The camera doesn't protrude, so the wobble here is minimal only due to the slight curvature of the back. As on the Success Pro, Red Magic 7 has both the external frame and this internal midsection made from aluminium while the rest is glass. Nubia doesn't give info on the glass back cover, but on the front you have Gorilla Glass 5, so low altitude drops and scratches shouldn't be an issue. Besides that, glass means things can get slippery, but Nubia includes this nice transparent case that doesn't interfere with the inputs while keeping that pretty back still somewhat visible. What remained the same as on the 6S Pro is the positioning of all the buttons and inputs. The left side still has the game space switch, the volume rocker and the cooling fan intake vent, while the right or the up side has the power button, the exhaust vent and the shoulder triggers. The bottom features the SIM tray, the USB-C input and the speaker, while the top has the 3.5mm audio jack, for which I once again commend Nubia for including. A new addition here is an additional cooling vent on the back that's here to keep things even cooler, but more on that a bit later. The front panel still has a small, unintrusive bezel that is there to enable a firmer grip while gaming. The top bezel is also where you'll find all the sensors, the earpiece which doubles as a second speaker, as well as the front-facing camera which is now situated on the left, whereas it was on the right on the 6S Pro. The Red Magic 7 has a sizable 6.8 inch AMOLED display with a 2400 by 1080 resolution and a pixel density of 388 ppi. In terms of sheer image quality, the screen still looks fantastic despite having lower pixel density and max brightness when compared to some other flagship phones. Sure, I would have liked a bit more than the maximum of 530 nits it goes up to, but that is still plenty enough for excellent indoor and ok outdoor visibility. The color accuracy is fully adjustable but it's generally pretty great even at the default setting and the phone is even HDR10 compliant, which brings a whole range of quality benefits in supported apps. But what separates the screen here from the crowd is its blazing fast 165Hz refresh rate and the 720Hz touch sampling rate when using several fingers. The latter makes gaming a more responsive affair and makes every input noticeably snappier than what you might be used to from a non-gaming phone. Now as far as the screen refresh rate goes, you can set it to 60, 90, 120 and 165 hertz, and the phone will even automatically downgrade it if an app doesn't support a higher setting. Now something that I mentioned in my 6S Pro review is that very few apps actually support the 165 hertz refresh rate and the situation is still pretty much the same. There are a few games that do support it like Real Racing 3 and Dead Trigger 2, but most of what's on offer on the Play Store will usually fall somewhere between 144 and 60Hz. Now while it's great to game at a high refresh rate, the real star of the show here is the screen responsiveness along with the shoulder triggers. 
these can be mapped to any on-screen input, they feel very intuitive and honestly make gaming a breeze. Instead of having your fingers cramped onto the screen, you get a higher degree of control that will make the world of difference and probably result in you being called a cheater more than a few times. Now, under the hood, Red Magic 7 is among the first flagships to be equipped with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 CPU. Along with that, there's the Adreno 730 GPU, 256GB of UFS type storage and for the Supernova Transparent model, a whopping 18GB of LPDDR5 RAM. If it wasn't clear, this is truly some high-end mobile hardware that blazes past the competition in almost every benchmarking test out there. It will eat up any game you throw at it with ease and you won't get it to slow down even with some extreme multitasking. What's even better, Nubia improved the already great cooling system found on their previous phones for even better sustained performance. The cooling fan pumps out even more hot air thanks to the exhaust on the back and the new materials, the VC heatsink and the thermal conductivity gel greatly increase heat dissipation. All of it combined means you'll barely get any throttling during longer play sessions with the heat on the frame starting to accumulate only after an hour or so of uninterrupted gameplay. Now as for the battery, compared to 6S Pro 5050, the Red Magic 7 bumps things down to 4500 mAh and this is highly felt in its day-to-day -day use. Whereas the 6S Pro could handle almost 6 hours of uninterrupted gameplay or a day and a half of mixed regular usage, the Red Magic 7 will need to be charged daily. Depending on the screen refresh rate and brightness, it will give you anywhere between 10 to 13 hours of screen on time, which is 3 to 4 hours worse than on the previous model. Luckily, what it lacks in longevity, it more than makes up for in charging speed, with a supplied 65W charger taking it from 0 to 95% in just around 30 minutes. Now, the camera has never been a priority in any of the previous Red Magic phones and that didn't change with the Red Magic 7. You once again have the 64 megapixel primary shooter, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, a 2 megapixel macro camera and an 8 megapixel selfie snapper. Like the 6S Pro, all the cameras can and will deliver good looking photos in daylight or otherwise good lighting conditions. There's plenty of detail in each image and the sharpening is done a bit more intelligently than on the 6S Pro. Once again, thanks to the increased contrast, the images tend to look really accurate and true to life in terms of color. While this is also true for the ultra wide, the macro and the selfie snapper, the images on these three tend to look rather soft and lack the detail of the main camera. What's worse, as lighting conditions deteriorate, so does the quality of the images. The main camera and the dedicated night mode are the only ones capable of delivering solid looking images when things go darker. The night mode especially looks to be much improved than compared to the 6S Pro, with the images now looking brighter as well as having increased detail and sharpness. The portrait mode still looks unconvincing as ever, with the sensor being really bad at detecting edges to apply the fox bokeh effect. An issue that persists ever since the Red Magic 5S is that the portrait mode doesn't work on the selfie camera, so keep it in mind if that's something you care about. Regular images taken with the selfie snapper are serviceable, once again providing accurate colors and a sufficient amount of detail. As far as video goes, the Red Magic 7 supports up to 8K video recording, but I found it's better to bump things down down to 4K, which offers both HDR and electronic image stabilization while still providing a ton of detail. Now for the software, the Red Magic 7 has the Android 12 with the Red Magic OS 5.0 sitting on top. The basic experience remains unchanged when compared to previous versions of the OS. At first glance, it's the basic Android setup with an app drawer and a notification bar with quick toggles. With that said, there are some distinctly Red Magic visual stuff that follows the entire gamer aesthetic like really striking wallpapers, themes and an always on display with a ton of videos, GIFs and images. 
The fingerprint reader is still insanely fast and reliable, requiring only a slight tap to unlock the phone. Surprisingly, the sensor even got an upgrade in that you can use it to somewhat accurately measure your resting position heart rate. The Entertainment Toolbox or the Edge Shortcut menu makes a comeback here, but it still remains a bit too high for one-handed use, with no option to change its position. The game space is once again here, and it's still as useful as ever while looking better than ever. It's a place where all of your games are presented with these flashy cards and once inside one you get a ton of gaming-centric features. Simply swiping from any side reveals this quick menu where you can see and boost your hardware performance, change the refresh rate and brightness, record the screen, engage the turbo fan and much much more. You can even open up some apps in a small window, so you never have to break away from a game if you need to send a quick message or something of the sort. The game space also offers up some interesting plugins to assist your gaming and it's here that you can customize what your triggers do and how sensitive they are. Ultimately, depending on the model, the Red Magic 7 will cost you anywhere between 600 and 800 US dollars, which when compared to other gaming smartphones, makes it relatively affordable. While it definitely isn't a huge step up from Red Magic 6s Pro, its beastly performance, flashy design, a whole host of gaming features and a unique cooling system easily make it one of, if not the best gaming smartphones out there. If you like what you've seen in this video, as always, the product link will be included in the description down below. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe to Keen Gamer for more reviews just like this one.